Now, joining us uh, from uh, Buja studio is the uh, General Secretary, International Trade Congress uh, Worldwide, uh, Sharon Bureau. Good morning to you and thanks uh, for joining us, Sharon. Good. Good morning. Okay, so talk to us about how the International Trade Union Confederation uh, interfaces with uh, Nigeria's uh, trade union, uh, well, it's Nigerian arm. And why exactly are you in Nigeria at this time? Well, cheap labour and insecure work is killing the economy. It's killing the Nigerian economy and it's killing the global economy. We need a new model. And uh, I'm here to talk to uh, Nigerian workers, but also leaders from other countries across Africa, about changing the model of work in the global economy. The multinational supply chains are not only, in fact, responsible for ripping off trillions of illicit lira from Nigeria, but they're oppressing workers. They're paying uh, such a pittance that workers can no longer live on the minimum wages. So we need a pay rise, we need a proper court system where oppression in terms of uh, outsourcing and contract labour, but also long hours, forced overtime, where these things can in fact be resolved. The Nigerian Labour Council, the uh, uh, colleagues here in Nigeria, in both our affiliates, they're fighting for decent work. We want the government to be with them, to stand for their citizens, and indeed the other countries across Africa, their leaders to do the same. It's time to say enough of corporate greed. That's our global fight, end corporate greed. All right, Sharon, it's, it's, it's good to have you in the studio, but certainly give us an idea of how these things operate elsewhere in Europe and America differently from what is obtainable in Africa, maybe specifically Nigeria, especially talking about the conditions that workers go through and what is supposed to be in, on the ideal basis. Can you give us an idea so we know the difference between what we have here and what is obtainable there in the developed world, if we have to use that word? Well, I can tell you that the global workforce is in trouble. 60% of workers are supposed to work in the formal economy, but more than half of those workers work on insecure contracts with low wages and indeed often unsafe working conditions. 40% are in the informal economy, and you know right here in Nigeria, that's actually the overwhelming number of workers. They have no hope, no minimum wages, no social protection, no rights and no access to the rule of law. And then I hate to tell you, but 45 million of our brothers and sisters are enslaved. In 2016, they're in modern slavery. This is the model that the multinational enterprises have built. Now, some businessmen want to change this and we're working with them. But governments have to stand up and say, it's time to share the wealth. It's time to end corruption, end tax evasion, end illicit flows. We need the money to provide social protection for our people. And we need to legislate for minimum wages on which people can live with dignity. We need collective bargaining to share the wealth. I must say that the uh, current global model that you see oppressing your workers here in Nigeria is actually undermining even the workforce in developed economies. It's failed, it must change. We need trade, we need a global economy, but it must be based on decent work, on fair wages. People must go to work knowing they'll come home safely. They must go to work knowing they won't be forced to work uh, unacceptable and oppressive hours. They must go to work knowing that they'll earn a fair day's wage. Mm. And Sharon, I'm sure you've been hearing about uh, the situation with uh, Nigeria as far as uh, you know, paying salaries is concerned. Many states, as many as 27 out of 36, are not able to pay salaries right now uh, based on the global economic downturn uh, that is hitting Nigeria really hard. I mean, considering the fact that we rely on oil as our main source of income. So how do you plan... Uh, to engage the federal government and indeed the state governments uh, to turn this situation around uh, so that uh, workers, uh, you know, don't 
end up bearing the brunt of this, um, you know, uh, really unfortunate situation? Well, I'm totally shocked that state enterprises, uh, state governments or local governments are not paying even the minimum wage. The minimum wage at the moment, just over uh, around 60 US dollars, I understand, mm. is not a wage on which you can live with dignity. When they don't pay workers, this isn't about whether they have the money. This is about whether they're prepared to stand against corruption, tax evasion and put their people first before they pay for other areas of the economy. So we say the minimum wage here is too low. We, we need uh, the, uh, the, the workers to be able to negotiate with their unions a wage on which they can live. That will help local businesses, small to medium enterprises in particular, when workers can actually invest in the economy. So it's time to do what we know works, that is to pay workers to allow them to, to uh, spend their money in the economy and indeed to get our domestic uh, economy back on track. Nigeria needs to invest. It needs to invest in uh, the energy shift, in solar energy, in other areas of renewable energy. You have abundant sun. You need to invest in new infrastructure. But most of all, you need to invest in your people to add value to your primary produce because the multinationals are simply taking your product and with it illicit flows of trillions of lira. Get it back. Regulate the economy. Stop corruption. Pay workers. Nigeria is the 20 largest economy. We need you in Africa, but we need you in the global economy to grow to your potential. The rest of the world is thieving Africa's future from its children. We need multinationals to be regulated, to be tamed, to have a court system that stands up against the oppression of your people. All right, Sharon, we, we, here in Nigeria, we've had lots and lots of unending strike actions, mm -hmm. strike generally from different sectors of our life, of our endeavors generally, uh, sometimes organized by Nigeria Labour Congress, other times by a trade union congress other times together and so on even smaller unions under this umbrella now how are you collaborating with this uh, umbrella bodies the trade union congress within nigeria and the nigeria labor congress in in achieving their aim for the betterment of the nigerian worker well that's what we're talking about today yesterday with other leaders across uh, africa what are our targets how are we going to organise? People go on strike not because they like to strike, but because they're desperate, because they've lost hope. We need to make sure that we bring back hope to people. And it's a simple recipe, a minimum wage on which you can live with dignity, you can raise your family. Social protection, you have the laws, but you need to end tax evasion to pay for social protection. That's the security for your own people. And then, of course, we need collective bargaining so that those workers working for multinationals and also so small to medium enterprises dependent on multinationals can bargain collectively with those giants. Some of them are bigger than economies. They have wealth. When 1% of the world's uh, people now earn the equivalent of 99% of the rest of us, this is its own form of inequality by design. Investing in your people, investing in infrastructure, ending corruption and tax evasion, these things will build your economy. Your manufacturing sector could be much stronger. You have an amazing country. You have agriculture, you have resources, you have abundant sun. We want to work with the uh, Congress of, uh, of Nigeria and the Nigerian Labour Council to make sure that workers are at the heart of a strong Nigeria. Mm. Indeed. Uh, Sharon, just uh, hold on a bit as we give our viewers uh, some you know, further, deeper insights into uh, this uh, situation with uh, labor. Now, on a daily basis, a large number of applicants queue at factory gates uh, waiting to be employed as casual laborers uh, since employers, mostly foreigners, are only looking for cheap labor. 
Now, there are basically two types of casual labor, like we said earlier, and there are those employed directly by the organization and those engaged by outsourcing firms. Now, Section 9, subsection 1C of the Labor Act of 1974 defines contract of employment as any agreement, whether oral or written, express or implied, whereby one person agrees to employ another as a worker and that other person agrees to serve the employer as a worker. An employment contract is said to be wrongfully terminated where, where it is done in breach of the terms of the employment contract between the parties, which usually prescribes a notice period or payment in lieu of notice. In Nigeria, an employer can terminate the contract of employment with his employee at any time and for any reason or for no reason at all, provided the terms of the contract of service between them are complied with. Now, Section 11 of the Labor Act of 1974 states that either party to a contract of employment may terminate the contract on the expiration of notice given by him to the other party. Now, the Act also states that no person under the age of 16 years shall be capable of entering into a contract of employment except in the case of a contract of an apprenticeship. Now, labor is the, is the most important factor of production and thus deserving of special legal attention to achieve optimal and sustainable productivity. Mm. Of course, uh, we have uh, Sharon uh, Bureau there of the International Trade Union uh, Congress. She's in Nigeria right now. So, um, Sharon, I I'm sure you, you heard what we just reeled out, especially as it concerns um, casualization of workers, which is, I mean preponderant in Nigeria, for, for lack of a better word, and of course, a situation where employers can terminate, um, you know, contract of uh, an employee with no reason at all. Uh, what's your take on this? How do you plan to uh, turn this around? Well, this is not decent work. It doesn't comply with international labour standards. When your major multinationals know that they're treating your sons and daughters as cheap labour, as fodder for their own profits. Then it's time we all said, your uh, citizens are saying no, they're striking, your unions are saying no, the workers know they deserve uh, dignity and respect. Let's make the global system work with a new model of supply chains where workers are in fact recognised as the valuable source of wealth that they are and that they share the wealth. There is abundant money in the world. There is abundant wealth right here in Nigeria, but it must be shared and your economy must be developed for Nigerians first, not for multinational enterprises. Mm. All right, Sharon, we, we, we just talked about the, um, the, Act, the, the, the Act of 1974 Many em employers have an, have an awareness of what the specifications of this charter or this mm. act are, but employees don't get to know much, ab much about this. What does it take to enlighten or, or make aware the ordinary employee when he's going into an employment contract with an employer, for instance, for him to know that there are rights? In the moment he goes into this contract, he has a right, and when, whenever it is breached, he can go to court. Mm. Well, you're doing a great job by explaining the Act to people. If more media outlets did that, we'd be off to a good start. But clearly our unions are educating their workers. But we need to see some renovation to the court system here. It used to work very effectively as a tripartite court. But now it's uh, very legalistic, very technical. Often it costs workers and their unions a lot of money. We need quick, efficient remedy and compliance. But most of all, we need social dialogue. When, when the decent employers, and there are many around the world, I work with them, when they actually are in dialogue with the unions representing the workers, you can resolve these issues. So we have three requests here. We say to the government, negotiate a minimum wage on which people can live with dignity. When Nigeria are paid less than many uh, workers in Asia who are already struggling, Less than many workers in Latin America who are already struggling, it's not a decent minimum wage. Stand up in law and through the court system for collective bargaining and social dialogue. And let's work 
with the employers who want to make Nigeria strong. The domestic economy is as important as the export economy. It's more important for millions of workers in the informal economy where there's lots of entrepreneurialism. So education, yes, I'm a teacher by trade. Absolutely, people should know their rights. But let's also see that governments stand up for their people, that they pay workers a fair minimum wage, that they implement the social protection laws and that they remedy the court system. Um, Sharon, before we let you go, uh, of course, your campaign is to end uh, global uh, corporate greed. Um, and the multinationals are the ones who actually perpetrate this unfair practice on, you know, on, on employees. And it's, I'm wondering, as you go back, you know, as you leave Nigeria, what do you hope to take away with you, uh, you know, from this visit? Well... I know that we will fight on the ground and Nigeria will be a lead country in Africa. But we're winning the global architecture as well. Chancellor Merkel has put this agenda, rights in supply chains, on the G7 agenda last year. She'll put it on the G20 agenda next year. We're uh, negotiating around conditions at the ILO and we want an international labour convention. And we want to see mandated due diligence. That's the UN business and human rights principles. Every multinational, whether they employ their workers directly or not, must do the due diligence to see that their workers are not at risk. All workers who produce for them are not at risk of abuse or unfair treatment. We want the developed world to mandate due diligence so we can hold multinationals who are not wanting the change to a sustainable future, we can hold them to account. Can I just leave you with this thought? Mm -hmm. The global leaders last year took two historic decisions, the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Climate Agreement. Together, this charts a course to a zero poverty, zero carbon world. That must be the promise for Africa's future. And we must begin with workers being paid a fair and decent minimum wage and being able to depend on social protection and enjoy collective bargaining rights. It's that simple. Wow. Right, Sharon Perrault, Secretary General, International Trade Union Congress. Thank you for talking to us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much. And uh, let's remind our viewers, we're going out on TVC Entertainment. But, of course, you can continue to watch the show on TVC Nigeria on Concert Channel 190. DSTV 418, GoTV 45. And ACTV 510.